Welcome to Bowls Australia's coaching educational video series, The Coach's Den. In conjunction with Bowls Victoria, this video will shine a light on coaching a vision impaired player and the role of a director. Step one, what is a vision impaired bowler? Vision impaired B1 to B4 classifications. B1, no light perception in either eye up to light perception but no recognition of hand movements at any distance or in any direction. B2, from the ability to recognize hand movements up to the visual acuity of two out of 60. B3, from a visual acuity of better than two out of 60 up to a visual acuity of six out of 60. B4, a visual acuity of better than six out of 60 up to visual acuity of worse than six out of 24 and or a significantly reduced visual field of 20 degrees or less. The player has the option of being guided by a sighted director. Step two, familiarization. Although it comes naturally to most, the vision impaired bowler may need to be led to the various parts of the clubhouse to become familiar as where they are, i.e. toilets, water, green, etc. Show the player how to step on the green by either them holding your elbow or shoulder or alternatively step on the green, offer both hands and help them step down. Have the player feel the ditch depth and width. Walk the player up the green, stopping at the 21 metre mark and at the tee. Repeat the process when returning. The coach and director's number one priority is the safety of the bowlers as tripping or slipping on bowls jacks, etc. is amplified with a vision impaired person. Step three, the delivery. Familiarization of the equipment the bowler is using, jack, bowl and mat. There's, there's, there's diamonds here, you can feel the diamonds? Yeah. That's where you put where you line your feet up on. Okay. Okay, yep. okay. we're on grass and that's, mm -hmm. that's the weight of the kitty. That's a heavier kitty. Okay, and is that white or yellow? White. That's white. The coach or director should place the mat lead the bowler to the mat, and then let them feel it. Place their foot into the correct position by lining your foot on the mat, facing the bowler, and have them walk to you, placing their foot beside or in front of yours. Yeah, that's right. Okay, fine. This is a straight roll, so it's a front line. Give them a bowl to feel explaining the bias and how they can tell which is the bias side, stickers or rings on the ball. Like a sided bowler, the delivery position may vary from fully upright to crouching position. A little bit too wide there. That's the line now. That's the line when you're ready, go. Explain the difference of the two and mention that over time, you will as a team decide which is best for them. It is recommended that the director take a position no more than five metres in front of the bowler. This may vary depending on the sight of the bowler. The director should have their toe on the drawing lie to give the bowler something to aim at. We'll cover the coaching of the director later. Let the bowler have a couple of practice swings. This lets the bowler get the feel of the delivery, but also allows the director to see the arm swing in line with the aiming point. The bowler should be aiming to be as close to the director's toe as possible. By doing this, the director can make adjustments on the next shot for being narrow or wide. Important note, as per the rules of bowls, the director must be behind the mat when the bowl comes to rest. Step four, the clock face. As the vision impaired bowler cannot see the other end, most visualize the shot in their minds with instructions from the director, hence the use of the clock face. The kitty is set as the middle of the clock face. Depending on where the player's bowl finishes, the direction is given as to how far away from the kitty position it finishes. Example A is one metre at nine o'clock. 
Example B is one metre at four o'clock. If the kitty is ever moved, then the clock face moves as well. The kitty is always in the centre of the face. Step five, completing the end. At the completion of the end, lead the bowler up to the other end. It is a valuable tool to stop at the point level with each bowl as well as the kitty, so they can again visualise the head in their mind. Place the vision impaired bowler in a safe position on the green, then go back and kick bowls back. They are the eyes for both themselves and the vision impaired player. They must ensure the safety of their player as well as being responsible for getting the player's bowls on the green. Water for the bowler, leading them to the toilets as well as breaks, getting the cup of tea, a truly thankless task and one not to be taken lightly. Vision impaired bowlers should never be left alone. Make sure to familiarise the vision impaired bowler with where they're playing and their equipment. The coach and director's number one priority is safety to the bowlers. Tripping or slipping on bowls and jacks is amplified with vision impaired bowlers. The coach or director should place the mat, lead the bowler to the mat and let them feel it. Place their foot into correct position, give them a bowl to feel. The director should take the position no more than five metres in front of the bowler, with their toe on the drawing line to give the bowler something to aim at. Use the clock face. It's a great tool to help the vision impaired bowler understand where to bowl. And encourage, encourage, encourage. You are the vision impaired bowler's eyes and ears on the green. Explain to the coach exactly what we taught the bowler. Getting on the green, placing the mat, delivery positions, practice swings, stepping to a point where the player feels comfortable bowling, and how to position themselves so they can make alterations to the player's line.